Welcome to Smoky CNC Woolworks. I'm Brian, and today we're going to do much the same as we did last week. I told you all I would play one, going to shoot another one of these for a couple of weeks, but as you would guess, I shoot a video about the machine, and then of course, what do I get? More questions, which is great. I'll sit here and talk about it more today. I'm probably going to actually try to finish out doing the actual machine because I don't know that I'm going to go into the wiring anytime soon. That is kind of a long process whenever I get down to really explaining some of it. And to be honest, I'd have to go back and research some because I haven't wired that stuff in over a year now. I could figure it out, but it, it is a tedious part of the job. So that's what we're going to do today. We are going to run over and check out the machine. I'm going to go over the gantry, uh, touch up on some things on the rails because I had some questions there. And if y'all notice, I might sound a little different today. Right here, I've got a little lapel mic on. Well, I've got new toys and gadgets. If you saw the last video, I was promoting another channel called Next Level Revelation. And it's with my friend and pastor, Craig Lindley. He's also a motivational speaker. And so the biggest part of it's gonna be based on the motivational side of it. And there is gonna be some side parts of it in the church and because he has got the same energy at both places and really puts out good messages. Uh, if y'all hadn't gone and checked him out yet, just do that. I'll leave another link uh, to Next Level Revelation. And I'll leave a link down below for these little gadgets that I'm using. It goes to the affiliate account at Amazon, which I explained a couple of videos ago, where if you buy it, I make just a little bit of money. It's five to 10% of whatever it costs. It's not a bunch of money, but hey, any part counts. So I'll leave a link to them. You'll see the camera I'm using. You're gonna look at it and go, uh, no. Yeah, it, it was expensive. But it has a lot clearer picture, has a lot more features, and once I actually learn how to run the whole thing, I probably can make a lot better video. So let's go look at the machine. Let's go. Well, the unfortunate side is the only good way to uh, shoot this is I've got to hand carry it, and my shots aren't always the great, greatest. So here was one of the questions right off the bat was uh, right here on the rails and the ball screws. People notice that four foot, five foot because I'm the same at both ends. My initial thinking was that the glides that are underneath here would stop here and would be far enough in the middle, be far enough in the middle there that this overhang would come all the way back. Well, the overhang is only oh, three inches, about that much. So honestly, I could have made these probably the same length. So the question they had about that was, if I did that, why did I not make this long enough to support my motor? Well, quite simply, I knew that the motor, we'll look right down at here, you can see that it sets out all oh, good, three, three and a half inches from the rail, and I knew it had to be out, and I was gonna to have to add some kind of stuff out here to hold it up. So I simply took a piece of angle iron, which is the, that base piece there, and I just cobbled this together. I mean, it, it, honestly, I just put a piece of flat stock up top, welded it to the top rail, and then it's just a little extra support. Does it need that extra support? Probably not. That's a thick piece of metal. And it probably would have held with that one weld, but as I tend to do, I overkilled it. I mean, look at the support system I have down here. This is two inch angle iron, and it's thick stuff. <laughs> you can see how thick that stuff is. You know, that, that bracing right there would probably, you probably could drive your car on top of it, it wouldn't bend, but you know, I didn't want anything moving. So that's where I mounted my motors, and it just gave me the, room to do that outside uh, the top rail. And so right out here is the same thing. You can see I did not support this that much. I put this in this little, I'm not sure what they call these, but it's a, it's got ball bearings in it. It allows this end of the ball screw to turn. I'm sure one of the viewers will be able to tell me the correct terminology on that, what this little thing's called. And uh, I just put a little piece of flat stock there too and just bolted to it. All, my only concern there was making sure it was perfectly parallel with this. That way I have smooth travel all the way down. 
So we're gonna get up here into the gantry. I'm gonna show you right off from outside to outside of my three by one and a half inch rectangular tubing is eight inches. So that leaves a right at a two inch gap in between. There was no, I didn't have tons of reasoning for this other than I wanted the, I'm gonna see if I can zoom in there. I wanted the little deal that travels on the ball screw. I wanted to be sure it had clearance and it could fit between the both of those rails, which it does perfectly. It's actually above it, so it never even gets close. Wasn't no, I didn't know how that was all gonna turn out when I started building it. That's why I did it that way. But it makes for a nice solid base. So again, that like I said, that's three by one and a half inch rectangular tubing on both of those. They are both five foot long. You can see that I've got overhang here. The other end is the same. I have mounted my rails inside this rail, so it is four foot. And actually, you know I have half an inch on both ends because we know it's 49 inches between the pieces of frame there. And something I didn't account for. Okay, so. Yeah, it's four foot from there to the other end, but we have like zero distance from the rail. We got half an inch from the rail to that. So when we walk over and look at the spindle setup, spindle where it cuts, look at the side of my little bracing here. Look how much room I'm gonna lose whenever we get over to the side, right there. So it's gonna come over here and it's gonna hit this rail, well right now that tells me about right here is where I have to stop cutting. And that's the way it is. I mean, it, I really have to stop right there. How you could make that better, probably just cut down on some of the bracing. You can see this back here is flat stock aluminum, all three of these pieces. And then I just put little gussets out here with wood just to keep more bracing to it. Probably overkill. I honestly believe if you could mount this uh, Z-Travel right here, this carrier, that allows it to go up and down and just mount it to your gantry up top. Or again, you're gonna see a piece of this flat stock aluminum. I mean, look at the bolts in this thing. That is for a glide on this, a glide on this, that's those eight. The glide that's in the middle down the ball screw, then glide, glide on the other rail. And then right here is bolted the plate which is a 90 degree angle that I've welded, I bolted the uh, Z-Travel to it. And so I made them a little bit longer on purpose to put gussets out here. Before thinking about, hey, if I make those too wide, it's gonna run into that rail right there. But that's what happened, it does, and so I lose about eight to 10 inches there. On the Y-axis, I lose approximately 10 to 12 inches because I have to stop right here. And from the back of that slide is where I've got to stop because I can't run that slide completely off here. We'll be really be in a bind. So by that being eight inches, we can grab that handy tape measure again. Okay, so we know that's eight inches there. So we can go from here and look right down it it's roughly right at six inches. When I'm sitting here looking at it, six inches to the middle of the spindle. So I'm losing 14 inches total right back here at the back of my machine. I mean, so I'm losing to right there. I cannot go past that point or my gantry will slide off the rails. <laughs> no pun intended, the whole thing's coming off the rails if it goes past that. But uh, so, that's my stopping point. So I actually don't even risk it. I stop about halfway back here on this slat and I don't come any further just because I don't want that mess happening. So I lose that much area. And honestly, my thinking of having the extra area up front was wrong. I can actually travel that thing all the way to the edge of this. I ought to have all this crap piled at the back, but this is where I'm always standing. So that's why it's all piled up here. So before we get away from that, another question I was asked, I just remembered the thickness of the rectangular tubing right down here. That is one eighth inch thick walls on that. Way overkill. 
it's what I had. So I mean, I, I was just using what I had available. And that came from building RV and boat storage and having some leftover metal. So over here, you can see my setup is identical to the other side. I've got it kicked out about the three to three and a half inches right here, parallel all the way down. It does the same thing as the other side. It just so happens the stepper motor is right over there on that one. And on this one, this just jumps out to this little pancake block. I mean, I, don't, I think that's, I'm, I'm calling it a pancake block, but it has a ball bearing in it to allow the travel of the ball screw. My bracing is set up the same way on this side. You can see it's just little, ah, oh, that's probably 16th inch angle, or flat steel, flat stock. And I just rolled a little bracing, bolted it to it, and we're rolling. The other thing I've got to talk about is the gantry. I've mentioned this before in the past and I mentioned it a couple of times to people in uh, emails when they were asking about it, about losing that distance. So my suggestion has always been take the gantry and turn it up on edge like this so the rails run on the outside of it like this right here. And so the gantry would actually be running right here. And so, I mean, look at the space you're saving right there. You're saving like six inches of travel. So my 14 just got cut down to eight if I would turn it up on side. These uh, rails would definitely carry it, like, carry it. Like I said last week, these are seven eighths inch rails. They are a supported rail, so they're bolted about every 12 inches. It, it wouldn't flex a bit. You could honestly then, instead of having all this gobbledygook I've got back here with a gusset and the flat plate, you could just put you a, flip this dude up on side and probably uh, connect directly to your slide for your Z. And that would save you tons. That right there would probably give you Oh, that's going to give you, if you do it that way, it would give you a good inch and a half, two inches that you could take off of each side. And so you're going to save travel there. And that's the whole, the whole name of the game whenever you're doing this. Most recently, when I've been talking to people about their builds, I've honestly been telling them to go ahead and make their linear rails and their ball screws five foot. By doing that, you're going to get a true four foot table. Mine's not a true four foot table anymore because I didn't account for all of the, uh, the blocks I'd run into, all the, the, the travel stops. I mean, I didn't realize I was gonna run out of railing here because of how wide the gantry was. I didn't realize I was gonna run into the rails on the other side. I just hadn't thought that far ahead on it. But like I said, I, was, I shot from the hip on this. So I, I just had it in my head, built it and it worked. So I'm not upset, I just, of course, wish I'd had done it a little different. So there are a few more odds and ends that I didn't cover. I mean, there's little clamps and little bitty added extras and accessories that I, some I have, some I don't, and, but none of it's big stuff. You can look through all the parts whenever you get over there on Amazon, and there are tons of things you could have done differently. You can buy all the mounts that I built myself and just bolt them on. Look, look sharp look great, but I was never concerned about the look because I've got to be honest, the YouTube was kind of a afterthought thing. Uh, I built this thing to do trade shows because it's where my wife wanted to go when I got retired. And I got to doing this, had a buddy that did YouTube, talked to him about it, and he's going, man, put it on there. He said, it'll, it'll get watched. And, and thankfully, you guys watch me every week. so. It wasn't the main reason that I built it. Let's put it that way. It was I did it because I do do I do a lot of woodwork anyway, and this just adds to it. And I keep on telling you guys that I'm going to venture off into this shop more, and it hadn't happened yet. And I, I just have it. And because I am going to start using this thing for other projects, I will probably start cutting parts for things. One of the things I've been kind of hitting on was a rocking chair. I've been wanting to build a rocking chair. I've got an old one that's shot. I'm going to measure some parts and I may program them in, let the machine cut them for me so they're exact and no brainer. I just put it together. But there's stuff like that. And I mean, and I've got other projects out there that I'm going to try to move this into so it can help me. And we're just going to have to kind of see how that goes because that's just kind of another shoot from the hip thing when I do that stuff. 
I uh, just give it a whirl, and once I get everything worked out, I make a few changes here and there that it comes to be a good product. So that's going to be it for this one, guys. Uh, like I said, go check out Next Level Revelation. It'll be right up there, right up top in the corner. Uh, go see what they're doing over there. You're going to find me do another video about this, about Next Level uh, Revelation, because at some point, I've got to cut the logo for that channel, of course. <laughs> And so on that one, hopefully I'm going to let you meet Craig, let you listen to him a little bit because the guy is just captivating when he talks. So that's going to be it today, guys. Uh, if you haven't done so yet, please subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.